Hey, what's up? We're going to go over the lesson portion of the section angles and radian measure. So let's go ahead and get started. So this section has three main components. We're going to start with the first one in the top left here. And this is the discussion with, uh, in terms of the terminal angle. Okay. What a terminal angle is, is the angle measure from the zero degree line. The zero degrees is this portion here. You start, it's almost like starting on the floor. And you measure from here to whichever line you're analyzing. So it's the angle that's created between the zero degree and this line from this side. You see how you can, between this and this, you can have this angle as well as this angle. This bottom going from this way is not considered a terminal angle, okay? So the terminal angle between any two, um, any line is going to be the angle measure from the zero going counterclockwise and meeting up with this line, okay? So if this angle measure here was 150, 100 and uh, let's say 140 degrees, okay? You see, if you had an angle measure of 500 degrees, what would that angle look like? Okay, you would first start going all the way around the circle, 360 degrees, plus another 140 degrees. And you see you end up at the same line. So both 140 degrees and 500 are coterminal to each other. They produce the same terminal angle after you're done with the degree measure. So 500 degrees, doesn't matter how many times you turn around, you're still facing that same direction. So 140, you're facing here, and 500, you're facing that same angle. So those are called coterminal to each other, okay? And you can get a coterminal angle by adding 360, or subtracting 360 to any angle. Okay, so that's the discussion with terminal angle. Terminal angles, now let's talk about um, radians and degrees, all right? This gets confusing to a lot of my students, and the best way I try to make an analogy is it's a unit conversion. It's like if I said, let's go over to Mexico and we're dealing with pesos okay it's still a unit of money right if you have um i'm not sure what the conversion is exactly if you had 45 pesos and that was equal to one dollar so if i said you have 90 pesos you can keep it in pesos or you can tell me it's two us dollars and technically it's still the same concept it's still the same money you could still buy the same things so a radian is like a different unit of a degree, okay? A radian and a degree are just a unit conversion different. And that unit conversion is this here. So two pi is equal to 360 degrees. One full rotation around the circle, 360 degrees, is the same as two pi radians, okay? And half of a circle, 180 degrees is the same as pi radians, halfway around the circle. So let's come up with an example. If we wanted to convert 120 degrees into radians, we'll go into more detail on the practice portion of this, but in order to convert from degrees to radians, you want to multiply this by something that's equivalent on top and bottom. But on the bottom, you want the bottom to be in degrees and the top to be radians, so that the bottom degrees cancels out with the degrees of this one. So the unit conversion is right here. 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So you see, now we can simplify this. The 
degrees cancel out because the degrees on top, degrees on bottom, you can cancel them out like that. And now 120 over uh, 180, I mean, this just simplifies to a fraction. So that would be um, 2 thirds pi radians. 120 degrees is equal to 2 thirds pi radians. And you could do this unit conversion between radians and degrees or degrees and radians. You would just flip this identity accordingly. Okay. Now let's talk about the unit circle and uh, radian and degree measures across that circle. Okay. So again, we mentioned that this part of it here is zero degrees or zero radians. All right. And um, we have these special tick marks along the circle. Okay. So um, the first tick marks that you should learn are the quarters. So you have zero, I'm going to talk in uh, degrees for now. So you have zero degrees, a quarter of a circle is 90 degrees, another quarter of a circle is 180 degrees, and another quarter is 270. You notice that if you know just this quarter, you can create these other quarters. Because if you know one quarter is 90, and you want to create a second quarter, it's just going to be 90 plus 90 to get to 180. So you don't necessarily have to memorize these per se, but if you memorize this first quadrant, you can kind of create the rest of this circle. So 90 plus 90 is 180, plus another 90 is gonna make 270. And you guess it, if you add even another 90, another quarter of a circle, you'll get to 360 degrees back to where you started, okay? The radian measures of these degrees are just the unit conversion that we talked about here for that specific degree measure. So pi over 6 is not anything special. It's the radian equivalent of 30 degrees. Pi over 4 is the radian equivalent of 45 degrees. Generally, people understand conceptualized degrees better because you've been using it in your life before you've come to this class. And radians is something new you're learning. So just remember, it's this, it represents the same thing. It's just a unit conversion different. So um, you should have memorized the quarters now in radians is 0. Pi over 2 is a quarter of a circle. You notice this is pi, but think about it. If you had pi over 2 and you added another pi over 2, that's 2 pi over 2 which is the same as pi. 2 pi over 2 is the same as pi, OK? And you see how many quarters of a circle you get to here. That's pi over 2, 1 pi over 2. That's 2 pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Boom, OK? And you add one more. That'd be 4 pi over 2, which 4 pi over 2 is equal to 2 pi, OK? All right. Um, the next are these intermediate tick marks, this 30, 45, and 60. You have to have these increments memorized. So for this quarter circle here, you should know 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Okay, those are important distinctions here. And so, for example, if you are asked... Um, this angle here, and you didn't know what angle that was, right? And you know it's the third tick mark. Let's look at this. If you had this memorized, instead of starting from the zero and going to 60, we're going to use 90 as our new zero. And you see this distance, 60 degrees, is the same as this distance here, 60 degrees. So this angle here is going to be 90 plus 60. So if you have this memorized, you can create all these other tick marks. This is going to be 90 plus 30, 120. 90 plus 45, 135. 90 plus 60, 150. Okay, and it works the same way around here. Let's look at this angle. This is the first tick mark from here. 
our reference is 270 plus the first tick mark, which is 30 degree increment. 270 plus 30 is going to get 300 and, and so on. So I don't have to go on here. Um, I'll see you in the practice portion. Uh, take care.